Welcome to an episode of InRange. I'm here to talk to you today about this 1600s era hand mortar. Essentially the M79 of the 1600s, a single shot grenade launcher. This reproduction is from Veteran Arms and I've done a bunch of videos about products from them on the channel here and I really love everything they do. If you haven't seen other videos about it, like look at the Blunderbuss video here on InRange and you'll see why I'm a fan of their work. And they've brought to market this reproduction. Yep. Now most people think of a grenade launcher, and grenades for that matter, as being a relatively modern invention. But the truth is grenades are actually quite old, and grenadiers were using grenades in 1600s, 1700s, 1800s. And in siege warfare, which certainly was something of the time, up to and including and in part of the American Revolution, there'd be times where you came up to a big old wall, a rampart wall. You couldn't get that grenade thrown by hand over that wall. So what do you do? You come up with a grenade launcher. But first, let's talk about grenades of that period. This is a good representation of what historic a grenade would have looked like. A hollow metal sphere filled with explosive and a fuse. Now it could be a glass ball, it could be a ceramic ball, it could even be a linen ball with some sort of projectiles embedded in it. But this is essentially what you're looking at. And so this would have been hand thrown. You had a fuse out there, this fuse determines the length of time before it goes off. And of course the central primary charge is inside. So you'd have a slow match, which is a, essentially a piece of rope that slowly burns, you blow on it, get it nice and cherry red, and light the fuse. Okay, this is now burning. When that fuse goes all the way in, this grenade goes off. Except it won't, because this isn't a real grenade. This is merely a replica. And there is, of course, no primary explosive charge inside of this metal ball. That would be illegal for one. And two, I wouldn't have wanted to hold on to that because this would have detonated and taken my hand with it. But that's how this worked. Slow, slow match, light the fuse, throw it where you need it to go. So how would you use this with a 1600s hand mortar? Well, it's a two-man crew. Let's get the hand mortar back out. I want to remind you all out there that this is a Patreon supported only project. In Range TV has no sponsors, no overlords. Veteran Arms sent this to me for free, but they have not paid me anything for this review and they've not paid me for any videos I've ever done. I just legitimately really like their products. And this is another cool historical product they brought to the market. If you want to see more of them, check out Veteran Arms. That said, if you like what this kind of content that you really don't see elsewhere because it's completely crowdfunded, please consider it. Patreon.com slash InRangeTV. If you can't, I understand. Just support the channel by subscribing and share with your friends. Thanks. All right, as I said, this is a two-man crew job. One of us has the hand mortar itself. It's my job to get this thing ready to go. So I pour some powder into the primary charge of the hand mortar, and I pour some powder into the pan to prime it, leaving this at half cock. The other man comes out with the grenade, it would have a fuse in it, of course. He lights the fuse. When the fuse is already burning, he would then put that into the hand mortar. We would then come to the rampart wall and fire. That has a lot of recoil. Oh, you can feel it. As for the hand grenade, we're not finding that again. Point is, it's now out of here, and that grenade is over the rampart wall, and there's a bunch of men scrambling to get away from it before it goes off. So this is a particularly dangerous job. Certainly you've heard of issues in which, for example, a flintlock doesn't necessarily go off, a flash in the pan. So let's go ahead and say, my man comes up with his hand grenade, lights the hand grenade, puts it in. Okay, and then I go to fire, and this, this. Didn't go off. There is now a grenade in here with a burning fuse that we can't put out, and I'm holding it in my hand. There isn't time to recharge the pan. So here's the discipline and doctrine of the day. There'd be a rope tied around the gun. This didn't go off. You literally would throw the gun away from you and get away from it. And when the grenade went off, more likely than not, it would just come out the muzzle, wouldn't destroy the gun. You'd use the rope, pull it back, and try again. Yeah. So another way that this would have been done is to have pre-measured charges hanging on a bandolier around your body. And you can see these historically correct Blackhorn 209 bottles are standing in place for us in this regard. So me, as the actual hand mortar operator, I would pull one of these off. They would have obviously period correct equipment. Pour some priming charge into the pan. 
pour the charge into the hand mortar. The grenade goes in and then we shoot. I've got my pre-measured charges. Take it off my bandolier. Prime the pan. Close the frizzen. This is at half cock. Pour the rest down. Grenadier lights the fuse on the grenade. We drop it in. This one fit. There it goes. Full cock. And then we fire. See what just happened? If that was a real grenade, I'd be getting rid of this gun real quick. But let's go ahead and try and shoot it again. Yep, again, about 200 yards. So this charge is about a 200 yard charge. Once you figured out what charge you needed for the distance with your gun, you'd calibrate them. You could even have maybe, this one's for 200 yards, this one's for 100 yards, this other one's for 300 yards. And that's how you would judge the distance in which you'd launch the grenade. Well, hopefully you really enjoyed this video. I have loved every product that I've received from Veteran Arms. Their blunderbuss is amazing. I have some other pistols and stuff I'm gonna do on the channel later. And this now, addition to my collection of this 1600s, 1700s era hand mortar is a real treat. This is the flintlock equivalent of the modern can cannon. People shooting soda cans out at distance and such, or even tennis balls like this. Guess what? Same diameter. You can shoot tennis balls out of this all day long. So if you want a flintlock based hand cannon, or excuse me, a flintlock based can cannon, it's also a hand cannon, check out Veteran Arms. Thank you guys for sending this to me. It's really a cool piece of history. And you can see a big, beautiful, chonky flintlock. Oof. Thanks for watching. Please share with your friends, subscribe, share, maybe support me on patreon.com. We'll see you next time.